Hi guys, welcome back to our channel. It's Yvonne from Ginger Chick Rehab. I am so glad to have you back today. And on our channel, along with my husband, Chris, we share a thrift flips. I go out thrifting, we do makeovers on these items, and we share the process of how we fix these items up, and we share our vision of how what we see for these items and we get them ready to resell. And if you're not a reseller, just maybe we inspire you to flip something in your own home just to give it new life so you have some new decor. So in today's video, when I am thrifting, I cannot pass up a riser, a Lazy Susan, a tray. So in today's video, I am sharing the process of some painted trays, some risers, some Lazy Susans, and what my vision for these items are. I, we are blessed that these are one of our hot sellers in our booth, so I love to get a whole grouping done. So we are getting ready for the summer season. So this is, if you watched our first video on the Lazy Susan makeover. So this is the part two. These are the painted items that I'm sharing my vision with you all of what I did to get these items ready to resell. So this is why there is a part two. There's just so many options of redoing these little pieces like this. I just can't pass them up. A piece of wood, a cutting board, just a tray in itself. And I know you all saw some of the just the natural turntables lazy susans in the last video so now i'm going to share with you the rest of it especially this big bad boy oh my gosh look at how big this one i just love that unique shape and even something as simple as i think it might have been on top of a stool or something but i can totally envision this as a riser and just painting this little piece up with just some white so just a quick recap i'm going to be taking all the price tags off any of the thrift store stickers any manufacturing tags i'm just going to use the assistance of the heat gun just to release that sticky to help them come off just a little bit easier and if i need to take any handles off like this tray this already had some nice black handles i actually don't even feel the need to paint these handles they're in that good of shape this one was a nice find. It was already a riser. It already had some nice detail. It already had some nice feet on it, but you can see those screw holes. So I'm just going to go ahead and fill them in with just a little bit of spackling. So now this, this bad boy one, he needs some help. He has lots of scrapes, lots of scratches. That old varnish needs to come off. And I'm just using the Roby sander because I know I want to go to town. And, you know, there's kind of a controversy about sanding. Some, a lot of people have sent me links to the scuff sander that I should give that a try. But as for us, it's all about the sandpaper. I don't know about you all. The machines are all nice. I don't mind any of the machines that we use. I appreciate you all sharing that information with us. But Chris had just tested out that sander not too long ago. And though he passed on the sander he did purchase the sandpaper and if you're watching this right now that sandpaper is demolishing it and unfortunately it's something from his business where he works in the office that the salesperson offered to let him buy some of the sandpaper so it's not anything I can link but it is just destroying the finish on this and just coming right down to that natural wood. I wasn't even planning on going down to the natural wood. I was just planning on getting the scuffs off. So this is the same sandpaper Chris did on that storage barrel table bench that we had done. And oh my gosh, I can see the joy of how he got it all the way down to that natural wood. This is just awesome sandpaper. And actually, as sandpaper goes, this was the only the one piece. And this piece can definitely be used again and again. A lot of times we are using sandpaper from Home Depot, Harbor Freight, Walmart. It's one-time use and then you got to get a new piece. I just love when I come across these little cutting boards. They're always natural. There's no finish on them. There's not, I don't even think they really have been used. I'm just going to give it a life, light scuffing. And no, I do not have a riser leg problem. 
No, not at all. I may hoard because you just never know when you go to do a project what you're going to need. So these are those legs from Lowe's that you get that two pack for less than $3. As you see, some of these are thrifted pieces. I'm pulling out how many legs I need for those. And then I get these little knobs off of Amazon, little wooden doorknobs, which I think they look more like riser feet to me. So I have a couple different ones left over from packs. I'll try to remember to link them down below. And those are some thrifted pieces. Just, yeah, I just can't pass them up and I like to have them on hand. So once I've used these up, I'll order some more from Amazon. So when it comes to wood to wood bond, you just cannot beat the gluing of tight bond glue on this. So I'm just going in. I know we have this applicator. It's just easier the way that it squeezes out. It doesn't get caught up and glued into that tip. It's always ready to use. That's why I just have the bottle sitting off to the side. So I just get them all glued and then it has a little bit more play time that I can go in and make sure that they're centered, squish it down. Cause you know, if you, when you get that glue, it kind of slides a little bit. So I love this tight bond glue so far, so good. And so that I just need to let them sit for a few hours and let them glue. Then I had to laugh when Chris is like, why are you holding that bottle upside down? That bottle will just squirt out. I'm like, oh, I did not know I didn't need to tear, turn this applicator bottle upside down that you just squeeze on it and it goes up into that area so you can glue. So I was making it harder than I needed to. After getting them all glued up, I just went back with a wet wipe and made sure that I could get any of the excess glue that had squirted out. I tried just to apply a little bit, but you know, if a little bit works, a little bit more works even better, right? Now this piece is going to be cut in two. We have so two of them to make a set of four. These are going to be the legs for that, what probably came off the stool top. Now that I have these items all prepped, glued, sanded, whatever I need to do, now I need to give them a good cleaning. I'm just using some super clean and some hot water and just getting them wiped down and making sure that they are nice and dry before I go on to painting them. So this was a giggle moment, not really. So this piece was painted with chalk paint, but it was never sealed. So when I went to start washing pieces off I just became black this is when I say in our videos the youtuber say in your videos chalk paint needs to be sealed in and maybe that's why somebody had made this nice riser and that they had donated because they unfortunately I don't know does the bottle of chalk paints not say that I guess I've never read the back of a bottle of chalk paint anyway but definitely had to throw this piece of sandpaper out afterwards since I have so many pieces and I have so many legs to deal with that are already attached, I want to be able to spray these pieces and I usually, my go-to would just be the Rust-Oleum spray paint can, but I really wanted to test out the hopper that we had purchased, might as well use it, And I, but I didn't have any chalk paint like this other than this Waverly ink. Because I think that when I use the regular Walmart brands um, that aren't chalk paint, that was what was ruining our hoppers and we went through way too many. And now that I've done that Annie Sloan paint, I think I know how to water it down enough that I can get it to spray out of that hopper. Uh, yes, when I bought the hopper, they had these stands on sale. So uh, yeah, even though Chris is there to help me today, that doesn't mean he always is to help <laughs> Because that's the hard thing with the hoppers is trying to pour the paint in them without them tipping over. And the stand is nice. It was less than $12. So these are those trays for that were $5. They are from the Target Dollar Spot. And at first I only picked up two. And I know when I did the last trays, they sold really well in my booth that I had painted up and changed a little bit. So I grabbed four this time. So they say barbecue in the inside, but just painting them is just going to take them up a notch. I don't think that this Waverly ink chalk paint is spraying out of this hopper. Per, I, I like it. It seems to be spraying out evenly. I don't be, seem to be getting plugs or splurts, uh, you know, where it sprays too much paint. Um, I'm, it's, I don't think it's bad. It's working well for my undercoat of black.
And this piece, this was just one of those inbox where you'd set your papers, but when scrolling through Pinterest, I had seen that people had made them into risers. So I don't think this is my original idea. I spent a, way too much time looking up or just searching on Pinterest, getting in, inspirations. And then I just took those little cups and gave it some little feet. You're hardly even going to see the feet on this piece, but just something to rise it up just a little bit. And for the ease of it, I could have painted the legs separately, maybe, and not already attached them. But to, it's just easier for me to get them glued on. So I've got that wood to wood adhesion and then get them sprayed up. So that's why I always like to spray them. That way I don't get all that build up trying to brush that on. It's just making a nice, smooth coat. So now that I've got them all sprayed up, they're undercoats, so I can flip them over. First, I'm going to seal that chalk paint in using some polycrylic. Just give it a nice, nice misting. That's just enough that it will seal this chalk paint in. So when I flip them over to do the top, top sides, they're not all getting marred up. So what I did to the one side, now I have to flip them over and do to the other side, get all that painted up black and then sealed in with them some polycrylic too. For these target trays, I did not worry about sanding that barbecue off. My idea of how I'm going to finish these up, I wasn't worried about that barbecue showing through. So most of these pieces are going to be white, so I'm going to be using, I cleaned out that sprayer, I'm going in and spraying them using the Rust-Oleum chalk paint in the white linen, and I'm doing that water where I water it down. I'm going to share it with you how I've learned from the Annie Sloan site how to get this watered down. I, I know that, I think that is the confusion of how much to water down when you get into spraying chalk paint. So it, so it doesn't worm. So that means where it worms, where it sits on top of the paint. So when I'm mixing it up, I keep adding the water until the paint does not, when I lift that stir stick up, it does, it goes straight into, it doesn't lay on top of. So now I'm going in and painting. I'm doing the same process as I did with the black, but now I'm doing it with the white. And when it comes to the white, the white is just that color that it's going to take two coats i don't want to try to over try to cover these up with one very thick coat i rather go back in it's chalk paint it dries pretty fast especially since it is watered down now would you look at that i called him a bad boy at the beginning and that is my fault because look what he's doing he is bleeding through darn it all so now i have to go in with some shellac couple coats of shellac sp spray and I guess I should have sanded all that off on the bottom. It's just that old stain that they used to use that just makes white paint yellow like this. So a couple coats and hopefully I can solve this problem. So yep, you guessed it. Whatever I did to the bottom side of these trays, I now need to do to the top side of these trays. So and for these Target dollar spot ones, I did leave two black and then I'm doing two white because why not? I picked up four. Always got to be that one in a grouping that causes problems and now he's going to be a whole stage behind because I have to work on the bottom before I can flip him over and do his front. So I think when it came to this little rattan piece, I just, I was inspired walking through Hobby Lobby, seeing where they had done the half white and then left the, the color, the natural color. So I'm going to go in with just that same rust-oleum paint and go ahead i'm trying not to squish too much through i don't really want to have to mess with the bottom if i don't have to and just paint this rattan it drops in the center that's why i have that taped off and just paint this outer rim white so i'm really liking these annie sloan sanding sponges oh my gosh that they it's nice there's a coarse a medium and a fine and for this Rust-Oleum paint, it sands off really easy. That's why I chose to use that. I like that distressed edges. I spent the time to do that undercoat of black. I want to be able to see it come through from the underneath. So I'm just going around with that, the coarse sandpaper and going on those edges to reveal some of that black. And then sanding the rest of the piece smooth.
And sometimes when I am doing a grouping of similar items and I'm out thrifting and I run across another item, I definitely get it done while I'm doing that grouping like that little stool was. Now to get these at really smooth finish, I'm just taking a wet wipe and going over the entire piece. I've already sanded them. I've shown off that black and I wanted to, if I want to distress a little bit more, I can push a little bit harder with that wet wipe, but I love the smoothest I can get by taking a wet cloth to this chalk paint. So here's the Target dollar spot trays in black and yep, I know you can see that barb barbecue through there, but I knew the way that I was going to finish these up. I was not worried about it. And yes, I'm going to be decoupaging some tissue paper. This is tissue paper from Hobby Lobby. It's $2 a pack. Even though gift wrap was on sale for 50% off, they don't do the t tissue paper, I guess, but that's okay. There's eight pieces in these packs of tissue paper. So that is so cost efficient. So I may have grabbed a few packages. So now I'm just going to guesstimate, put that tray on top of the tissue paper and cut off some of this excess. And now I'm just going to be pouring out some Mod Podge in a bowl just using, I don't mind these brushes that I have used for chalk paint. They wash up. I like the way it applies the Mod Podge. I usually use the sponge applicators you know that you just throw out but i was like you know what i'm tired of i've been doing a lot of decoupage so i wanted something that i could rewash so it, it does wash out of them just sharing that with you and maybe you all already know that that i'm just late to the game so yep i'm just going to be putting this tissue paper i'm just trying to keep my pattern level and then i'm just flat you know i know it's going to have a little wrinkles in it i'm okay with that i just don't want some big wrinkles and the mosh posh doesn't really go through this tissue paper is nice it's not terribly thin so it's not like i'm getting that mosh posh all over my hands as i'm smoothing it out To get off the excess that is sticking up from the sides, I tried really carefully not to get the Mod Podge up the sides. I'm just taking a sharp exacto knife and a metal spatula that you'd put like spackling with and then just going over a couple times. The tissue paper's a little bit of wet still, so I'm pressing pretty hard on that spatula to get it to cut. Now I'm gonna go back over with one more layer on the top of the Mod Podge to just make sure that it's good and adhered, seal that tissue paper in. So for this next piece of what was tissue paper, it's almost like a piece of paper. It is rather th on the thick side. So definitely I didn't have to worry about it wrinkling up too much at all. And then just getting it nice and tight little packages around the corner, just taking my nail, making that nice tight seam. When I went over to cut the edges off, it ripped just a little bit. You know what? I said, I'm going with it. Go ahead and let it do that. It was more paperly it just gives it that more aged look this next piece of tissue paper uh it's the same thing that all tissue paper is not created equal some is really thin and some is thick but on this one i want to keep that center point that main point on that i think is more decorative i don't want to cut off to the side i want to try to have the pattern that's in the middle of this piece Third time's a charm of cutting the insert for this because I was able to keep that pattern and it's a much tighter, little close to the edge fit. Maybe the fourth one will even be better. Now I let the Mod Podge dry overnight, making sure, making sure that it was good and dry. I knew I wanted to go back and distress the edges of these pieces. I'm just using those sanding sponges from Annie Sloan. Love those. It's such... I like how they're flexible. So I'm just going in and showing some of that black where I had painted along the handles, along the sides, along those sharp edges, and then sanding the rest of the piece smooth. I definitely did not want to attempt to, to sand the piece while the Mod Podge was still wet, that's for sure. And yeah, I could have sanded it before I put the tissue paper in, but just in case I marred up the paint job, that's why I saved it for the last. 
And then I'll just use the air compressor to get all that sanding dust out of any of those little crevices. Now I'm going to go through and sand the black trace just the same using a different sandpaper. It's just the way that black paint sands. I'm going in with some 220 sandpaper. I'm just hitting those sharp edges. And then for the flat, I will go in with some fine grit steel wool. To finish off these two black trays, I'm going in with some Waverly antiquing wax and just richening up, sealing in that black paint. I just absolutely love the color that this Waverly wax makes my black paint. So I'll go through and do the entire piece. I want to age this paper just a little bit too, so I'm going to go in with that antiquing wax and running it over those that paper and it's going to hit all that little wrinkles and just make this piece look nice and aged the final step for these trays is i'm just going in with some rust-oleum clear coat and the mat that is just decoupaged with Maj Paj, a little bit of wax on them i just want to make sure that i'm going to seal these in i I would think they would be decorative, but just in case somebody wants to put a food item, item on it and it might get wet, I want to make sure that they're sealed and protected with a couple coats of this clear. So now it's time to add some detail to the rest of these white risers. So, of course, you know me, I love my green sack striping. It still sells for me, so I do not mind doing it. I am glad that people are happy with my, the thing that I love to do. So I am just using the half inch tape, which is a little bit smaller than the regular size masking tape. I don't want this to overpower the tray because a lot of times when you do these trays, people are going to be putting their home decor items on top of them. So I just like to add a little something to get somebody to pay attention to it in my booth, but not to overpower it that you are coming up covering up this huge design so just off centering some stripes so where you just put that piece of tape in the middle the fun of green sack striping is you can do as many or as little and off to side in the middle whatever you want it to be when i was in my paint cu cupboard i noticed that i had some celery and some moss waverly paint that i had not used i thought you know what greenery's in we're in the summer going into the summer season why not do a green stripe on this i know i'm probably surprising all of you but it's just like that pop of greenery in your booth just something to help not overpower just add a little something to it now i'm just using one of those sponge applicators those makeup sponges from the dollar tree i do that dry where there's just a little bit of paint on and i am impatient for paint to dry so i use the assistance of the heat gun to dry in between coats to achieve the coverage and the color of green that i'm looking for now for my next striping i'm just taking the regular size masking tape i buy this i always buy like four or five rolls when i'm at the dollar tree store for a dollar so i'm just running that tape along the one painted side as you see i'm leveling up there that way i have a little bit of overhang that is not on paint that will be my clear spot in between the next stripes and so i go to the other side and i do the same thing on the opposite side the other th nice thing about green sack striping is you can do whatever size that you want so now what i'm doing is i'm laying a piece of tape on either side and i am just eyeballing i want my secondary stripes on both sides to be almost the same size as what the space is that I'm leaving unpainted. So now I'm definitely going to use the assistance of the heat gun to release that sticky, especially since I put tape over that paint. I'm going to take some 220 sandpaper and just take where that paint feels raised up. I'm just going to smooth it down just a little bit. And if some of the paint came off when I pulled off the tape, as long as it wasn't too much, it's not any big deal. It's that perfectly imperfect. And I showed you that it was 150 grit, but this is dollar store paper. So let me tell you, that's not a real 150 grit. Well, sticking with that green, that summer, spring theme, I'm going to go with this floral, these little bitty flowers from Icy Pairs from the Redesign Stamps. 
to put a stamp on just at the bottom of just to give it a little more something something for this I'm just going to use that stays on ink and a acrylic block to stamp it on hoping that the acrylic block I'm always a little nervous with the acrylic block I ended up changing it over into um, the flexible one only because sometimes wood is not as level as what the acrylics blocks are and so it leaves areas that did not get pressed down on the ink if it I don't know do you all have you all noticed that wood thrifted pieces wood it in itself is not as level as what the manufactured acrylic blocks are so with this kind of being a cubby tray where you're going to sit things into it I wasn't going to put the design on the inside of it there's just enough of a ledge so I am still going I you know we're all on the fence of what trends are I don't know I guess I'm not trendy but I live in a farming community so farmhouse is still popular in our area so I'm just doing some simple lettering of some farmhouse on the front of this and I definitely love that this flexo foam form has a grid line pattern that I can follow my spacing even out my lettering and get my letters to be all nice and straight across And then I'm just going to go ahead and add just a couple little simple black stripes just down the sides of it. It already has those metal bracket pieces that I didn't really heavily distress just because I knew I wanted it. I don't know about you all, but sometimes I already have a plan for all my pieces before I even get started with them. So I'd already envisioned putting a couple of these little stripes just to make it pop just a little bit more. I pre-thought I probably should have done the farmhouse with the ink chalk paint also like I did the stripes so the stripes are a little bit more bolder than what the stamp of the farmhouse is but that's okay I just went through with some the that Dollar Tree 150 sandpaper and just distressed them just a little bit so it blends in a little bit more and now I'm just using that smaller half inch tape to give myself a little bit of guide to paint that next stripe on. For these stripes, I want the stripe that I already made and the stripe that's unpainted in the middle and the next stripe all to be the same size. That way it has a nice even flow. Well, to my eye anyway, it does. And now that I have that other stripe next to it, you can see we're just sanding that off just a little bit really does make a difference. Now this little tray is the same way. It has that raised side. I just want to keep it simple so somebody can stack their decor in the inside. Yes, I could detail, but I'm trying to do this, this video all on stenciling and using tape for green sack so that I'm not getting into any of my cricketing as if you notice I am in our workshop doing this today. So I'm just going in and just doing a little number four using some more of the lettering that I had purchased off of Amazon. Just something simple. A nice thing about not sealing these in before I did my stamping is I got a little bit of ink on there and with it being chalk paint, I was able to wipe it off. I'm just gonna kick off to the side a couple more little stripes. For this tray, since one side is not different than the other like the previous one, I am doing the same design on both of the longer sides. I don't know how many of you all saw the green hutch that we did when we used Annie Salone gray paint to redo it. And then I used the stamp that I had gotten from the cute little shop where I got the Annie Salone paint to stamp on the side of the drawers. Just a nice little fun feature. So I was like, oh, I want to be able to figure out how to use this on one of the risers. I love the size of it. I would love to find more this size. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that celery Waverly paint. And uh, yeah, this is... I my brayer was in my house i was too lazy to walk into the house into the craft room to get the brayer so i'm going little by little with the makeup sponge to apply the paint on this okay well that was fun so i'm gonna do it on this next piece too i was like oh i love that pattern i love the simplicity of these flowers and i even even love that it did not stamp perfectly I, that is what i always say that and perfectly perfect just gives it that aged look 
so not to be reproductive of what I'm doing all the time, I thought, okay, I'll add a couple little stripes just to this piece. So I'm not sure if it was chalk paint on top of chalk paint, but when I pulled the tape, even though I used the assistance of the heat gun, a lot of the paint came off. But I'm like, well, you know what? I'm going to go with it. It's going to really look like that aged look. So I'm just going back in and pulling off some more of the paint using some more masking tape. And then I go back through on the one that took a little too much off just with a fine um, tipped paintbrush and just added a little bit more on who says it has to be perfect okay i couldn't help myself so i changed i washed that off as best as i could using a wet wipe and then i changed it to that steel color but oh i do love that so now i'm to my bad boy piece and you probably have seen this pattern before because this is a pattern that sells i I'm going to go through with my general grain sack stripings and I'm going to be using the steel color. I usually use the apple barrel paints when I'm doing the stenciling. I was just in the workshop and all my Waverly paints are here. Now I will say when I put tape on this big chunky stripe first, it pretty much pulled all the tape off. So I don't know if I needed to seal it or maybe chalk paint is not necessarily the best thing to um, be doing grain sack stripings with on these type of items but you know what you work with what you have and i fixed what i needed to fix at the end but i just wanted to share that with you if you try this that it might happen to you and you might have to go back in and fix some after getting that middle stripe fixed i'm going to go in and do a little bit of sanding that stripe's going to feel raised i want it to feel nice and smooth so i'm just going to sand it a little bit I'm going in with this cafe stamp from Icy's Parents for my Risa design. And I'm sorry that you have to look at my um, very messy mat. My Icy's Parents stamps don't stick anymore. And I have to use the spray adhesive that I was suggested by people. But the problem is it does not come off very well. So after this event of doing all these, I'm going to go in and scrub it and take some rubbing alcohol. If anybody has any other suggestions that is not making a hot mess out of my mat, I would really appreciate it. So now I need to go in and I need to spray all these pieces with a clear coat. This is chalk paint. This is constantly going to be coming off. So for me not to smear any of my stencils or any of the ink on there, I'm just going to get these sprayed down. And after I get that sp spray on the top, I will spray them on the bottom too to make sure the whole piece is sealed. And then I'll go back through and if I feel any areas that needed to be sanded, I will sand. But then I'll finish all these pieces up with this one more coat of Verithane finishing wax just to make sure that it has nice and smooth feel to the touch. And then I've gotten all that sand dust off from sanding down. Sometimes that spray will leave just a little bit of a texture. So I don't know if any of you ever randomly come across a piece of like I did of this weaved maybe part of a stool I don't even know how it was attached to a stool or somebody's project piece I really don't know what it is but I was lucky that we had these pieces that we could cut in half but the problem was now how do you attach them because glue is definitely not going to be sticking on an even surface surface like that there is a little bit of wood inside there so we had to order these two-way screws off of amazon we looked at them at home depot but we could get 20 for the price that we could get a set of two at home depot unfortunately i'm sorry but cost efficient we may have run across this again so what chris is doing now is he pre-drilled a hole into that wood that's there he's puncturing where his where that screw is so he knows where to screw inside there so there's just a little piece of wood and that way he can screw it in so there's it's a two-way screw so it has threads on both sides
And remember, you don't have to be a reseller to flip an item. It's just flipping an item in your own home, just inspired by something that you already have, that you have tucked away in a closet, that you just were tired of looking at, just getting it out and doing a little something something just to make a little happy place. So I thank you so much for watching today's video and have I inspired you in any way to look at thrift store finds in a new way or just items laying around your home. And as always, thank you for being part of my YouTube family. And if you are new to this video and new checking us out for the first time, please consider hitting that subscription button along with the notification bell so you know when we've uploaded a new video. We'll see you next time, guys.